other, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Oh, Heavenly Father, I know your will will be done. Yes, sir. Oh, Heavenly Father, a few of your believing children have assembled themselves in the house of prayer one more time. Yes, sir. Saying thank, thank you. Say thank, thank you for our last night lying down. Thank you, Lord. And thank you for my early, early rising this morning. Yes, oh, Heavenly Father, you placed your darling angels by my bedside. Yes, sir. While I slumbered and I slept last night, yes, didn't even know I was in the world. You didn't let no hurt, harm, or danger come to me or my family. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the many blessings that you restored upon me. Did it early? Early this morning, my father, you touched me with that thing of love, yes, and I rose on due time, yes, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus, thank you. for all the many blessings that you restored upon us. Yes, then, oh, Heavenly Father, father. you gave me traveling grace. Yes, Lord. You brought me out to Sunday school one more time, yes, Lord. and I want to say thank you, Jesus, because there's somebody, somebody somewhere that don't have a roof over the head. Yes, Lord. There's somebody, somebody somewhere don't have food on the table. Yes, Lord. There's somebody, somebody somewhere that's laying on a bed of affliction. Yes, Lord. There's somebody, somebody somewhere that's in a coma this morning. There's somebody somewhere yes, that's a bereaved family. Yes, Lord. And there's some child being abused this morning. Yes, Lord. But oh, Heavenly Father, I'm calling on your name. Yes, Lord. Step in, Jesus. Step, in. Step by, stop by here, Jesus. There's somebody laying on a bed of affliction and been a many bad way. But, oh, Heavenly Father, stop by all the hospitals all across this land and country. Yes, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, touch Sister Smith this, this morning. Yes, Lord. Touch her with her finger of love, oh, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, ease her pain this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are able to do all things but fail. Then, oh, Heavenly Father, not only her, all the ones that are standing in the need of prayer. Yes, Lord. Then, oh, Heavenly Father, bless the man that you planted in this vineyard. Bless him in a mighty way that he may give us a word on high to tell this world, this dying world, that Jesus yet still lives. Yes, oh, Heavenly Father, I look back over my life, yes, sir. look back over the hills, the valleys, and the mountain that you brought me from. You brought me, you brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Yes, and I just want to say thank you. thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, I love you. I never forget what you did for me. Oh, Heavenly Father, don't never take your hands off of me. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, I look around in this room this morning. There's somebody going through something. Yes, oh, Heavenly Father, it ain't for me to know. Oh, Heavenly Father, I know you able, able. to do all things but fail. Yes, sir. You can be a lawyer <coughs> in a courtroom. Yes, sir. You can be a doctor in a sick room. Yes, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, you're my all in all this morning. I'm calling on you right now, Jesus. Right now. In one of these old days, yes, sir. <coughs> praying time going to be over. Yes, one of these old days, yes, singing time going to be over. Yes, one of these old days, I'm, I'm everybody going to roll me down this aisle and place me into this book bowl with my tongue glued to the roof of my mouth. And somebody going to call my name, and I won't be able to answer. Yes, but, oh, Heavenly Father, when you call my name, I want to be able to answer. I want you to hear you say, well done, well done, well done, well done yes, thou good and faithful servant. Then, oh, Heavenly Father, when I come down to the end of my journey, yes, the end of my road on this side, yes, please, Jesus, please. save me a home somewhere in your kingdom where I can uplift your name or better than I'm doing down here. I ask for these blessing in your son, Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 You look around and you tell the Lord, thank you. Because he's been good to us, y'all. Yes, he brought us from last year to this year. Yes. You know, you have a little hurt. You have a little sickness. But ain't he good? Yes, sir. Ain't, ain't the God, Lord good? Yes, sir. Ain't he good to you? Yes, sir. You got eyes to see. You got legs to walk. You got a tongue to talk. So we ought to give him all the praise. We ought to say, thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Come on, in the room. Oh, come on, in the room. You know, Jesus is my doctor. And he writes out all of my prescriptions. 
So you know what? You need to come on in the room and get Jesus some praise now. Hey, because I'm going to praise him about to praise him by myself. You know me? I, you can leave me out here, but I'm going to praise him all by myself. I have to. Because he's been good to me. So I'm now I'd like to thank you for letting your voice in the devotion. We're going to turn the remainder into the hands of the choir. Oh! 
summertime. Amen. But we thank God for every day. Amen. Because every day belongs to the Lord. And we thank God for it. Amen. And God is certainly good. And God is certainly watching over his people. We thank God for each and every one of you. It's just a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. For on yesterday we was in, in, in a house of God. Amen. But was at a home going. Amen. But we didn't realize that all of us got a home going one of these days. Amen. So we should be prepared for it. Just like we prepare to go on vacations. Amen. We prepare for everything. But how many of us are preparing to leave this world and be with the Lord? Amen. So we thank God for you. We thank God for everyone. We pray for our sick and for our shut in. We pray for those that don't know Jesus in the free parts of their sins. Amen. But this time we're going to ask the Reverend Wilkins to come and do our pulpit services. Morning. morning. Good morning, Barbara Creek. Oh, what a world we in. Amen. But we thank God for Jesus. but we're going to go to Psalms 23. Amen. <clears throat> One thing it is that we, we have a shepherd. We are the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shallows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. Yes. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. 
surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever a word for God speaking from God let us go to the throne of grace our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done oh gracious father we come once again father saying thank you father thank you for being God and God all along father thank you for the many blessings father God thank you for not being like man father God Father God, thanking that, thanking you that you sit high and look low, Father God. Even, Father God, when we go in the wrong direction, you don't turn your head, Father. You just keep your hands op open, knowing when we return, your hands open, ready to receive us, oh, Father God. Father, we thank you. Father, we come praying. For this world we in, Father God. For your word, tell us where we at and where we going, Father God. Help us to come closer to you, Lord. Father, we pray for the leaders of these countries, Father God. Oh, Father God, when you when you work in the world, you have to realize you're not of the world, Father God. And you have to lean on God and not man. Even though man make laws, Father, you got to continue to live, live on, lean on God. Oh, Father God, we just pray that our leaders in the country hear your word, Father God, because time is running out. Time is closing out, Father. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Father. Thank you for not getting tired of dealing with us, Father, and our shortcomings, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, oh, Father God. And, Father God, we pray for America. They tell you it's the land of the free, Father God. But we won't be free till Jesus come back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. But, Father God, your people is the one who can change things. The world can't change nothing, Lord. Help us, Lord. Then, Father God, we pray for your ministers, your bishops, your clergymen, Father God, all throughout the world, Father God, knowing it get a little rough on them, Father God, but we just pray that you continue to pour your strength on them, Father God. Then, Father, we ask you to come round by Barber Creek, Father God, and pray for our pastor, Jerry S. Davis, Father, and First Lady, Father God. Continue to pour your strength in him, Father God, because he man still, Father God. And he, fight, he fights the same battles that we fight, Father. Father, we thank you, Father. Then, Father, we pray for the little church on the side of the road, Father God. Barber Creek, Father God. With the light house on the corner. Don't have to be a light staying out there, Father God, but the light that go in and out of here, Father God, is a shine, oh Lord. Help us to continue to come to the house of prayer so we can receive this light, Father, and go back out into the world and let them know how good you is, Lord. We thank you, Father. Father, we pray for the sick and shed in throughout the world, Father God. We pray for the sick and shed in in our house, Father God. We pray for the less fortunate, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just keep our eyes open, Father God. We can see where we're going, Father God. Where we're going, the wealthiest country in the world, and we got people starving. Nowhere to stay, Father God. Help us, Lord. Help the church to focus back on you, Lord. But, Father God, at one time, the church used to take care of all the hungry and the sick, Father God. 
but we, we changed up with the world, Father God. Restore us, Lord, that we can do your work, Father God. Help us, O oh Lord. We just thank you, Father, for being a good God, Father God. And Father God, we've done all we can do, Father God. And can't do no more, Father God. We pray that you have a place prepared for all you, us in your kingdom, Father God. And we be able to hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Come on home in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. And amen. amen. Now it's time for missionary off of the tides. Yeah. 
great word. The Lord got the victory. The world can't do us no harm. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Lord, we come once again, Father, just to say thank you, Father God. Father God, we attempting to pray over your tithes and offerings, Father God. We ask you that you pray, Father God, because we don't know what to pray for, Father God. Oh, Father God, we thank you for the ones gave and the ones had not to give, Father God. But we pray, Father God, that this offering and tithe was taken up, Father God, that you change it to a hundredfold, Father God, that it be up building of your kingdom, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen and amen. Amen. Now it's announcement time. Western Baptist Association of Georgia is having a revival worship service Monday, February the 5th, Tuesday, the February the 6th, and Wednesday, February the 7th, each night at 7 p.m. The host church is Antioch Baptist Church, and the pastor that will bring the messages will be Christopher Wimberly of Hunter Hill First Baptist Church of Atlanta. And that begins tomorrow. A benefit program for Apostle Roderick Huey will be February the 17th at 4 p.m. at the Community Church of Atlanta, 2413 Old Flowery Branch Road in Gainesville, Georgia. Special guest, Asha Harvon, is an artist. Uh, there's a cash app at dollar sign Apostle Huey. Choir rehearsal, Saturday, 1 o'clock. And in keeping with... Uh, our tradition of honoring uh, black history this month, I'm gonna bring you a black history moment. Coco Golf. she's an American tennis player. Golf received a wild card entry to Wimbledon in 2019 when she was 15 and immediately rose to prominence by defeating five-time tournament champion Venus Williams in the first round. That year, Golf also reached the third round of the U.S. Open and won her first single title. The teenage phenomenon was selected to the U.S. Olympic team in June 2021, but had to withdraw from the delayed Tokyo Games after testing positive for COVID-19 at 19 years old. She, at 19 years old, she won her first Grand Slam title at the 2023 U.S. Open. Athleticism runs in the family. Corey played Division I basketball at Georgia State University. Her mother, Candy, was a gymnast who also participated in Division I track and field at Florida State University. Because Golf's parents were athletes, they wanted their firstborn to pursue a sport, so Golf began playing tennis at the age of six years old. Hey, would anybody else like to bring a Black History moment on next week? Anybody? This is a we thing, not our thing. Anybody welcome to bring a Black History moment next week? All right, got one. Next week. All right, thank you and have a blessed day. Pray for our sick and shut in everywhere. We know our secretary is out of head open heart surgery and we just pray for that she's have a, a speedy recovery. Yeah. For all our sick and shut in. Thank you so much. Black History Month. One day, 
They ain't going to have to give us nothing. Because God already gave it to us. We black history, 12 months a year. But we're going to take what they give us right now and celebrate it. I was uh, found out this weekend about a charity, a black charity, one of the oldest charities in the world. It's called Carry Steel. How they got that name is because the white people gave them some old rail carts. And they took them rail carts to let people sleep in because they had nowhere to live. Sleep in, no food. That was all they had. Had about a, about a hundred rail carts back in the day. But now they have a great charity complex in Atlanta, Georgia. <coughs> it's just amazing what the Lord has brought us through. All right. we, we accept what the Lord gives us. And that's why we got to get closer to him. Because this old thing fading away. Yeah. And this is not our home. We got to be prepared to get up out of here. We got to be aware of technology too. Technology is great, but it's always got some evil parts to it. That technology, A, AI, ain't no joke. And I'm gonna tell you, Satan all behind it, yeah. all behind it. But we we take for granted it's just another technology. But our children can't even lay their, their tablets down. Right. We as adults, we got to teach our children at the house. In the schools, they're not teaching our children about the word. And a few states trying to eliminate black education, black history. Mm -hmm. But as long as we're not aware of it, they'll rush right on past and we were like, oh. But we got to, got to pay attention and pay attention to our children. Just like we in here, when I came through, whether I wanted to come or not, Grandma brought me to church. We got to go back and get that. I don't care how bad they is, we got to go back and get them and bring them in here. Same way we was brought in here. All right, we gonna have another song from our fabulous choir. And after then, we hear from our own Pastor Jerry S. David. But if these two wings 
walk away from you. When doctors turn their back on you, Dr. Jesus is still right there. Got medicine in the hem of his garment. Says I. Father, one more time before you we stand. We stand as a small child before a just parent. Master, we stand as a child not even knowing how to go in or come out by ourselves. Not able to speak for ourselves, but Master, we ask that I would speak for us. Master, we ask that I would use our servant at this hour to, that we might say something that might help someone. Master, while we're standing with head bowed and heart humble, we ask that I would look over we ask that thou put your long arms texting around Sister Smith. And then, Master, we ask that thou would just keep on marching and go by and see Sister Seeley, Master. And then, Master, as you stop by Sister Seeley's house, Master, we ask that when you leave there, that you would go on down the road just a little bit further. And, Master, we know there are many sick and many afflicted. And Master, we ask that thou just look into their homes. And Master, we ask that thou just touch them with that finger of love. Help them to understand if they don't get well on this side, they'll be well on the other side. But Master, on the other side, there'll be no more pain and no more suffering. And the troubles of this world will be all the way to gone. Master, we pray that thou would just watch over my family, Master. Watch over every family of the, each and every one that's under this roof, Master. Then, Master, we ask that thou would allow thy Holy Spirit to just stop by here for a little while. Yes. Fall fresh upon us, Master. Yes. That not only I might feel it, but that the whole congregation might feel it. And then, Master, when we come down to the end of this life journey, can no longer call upon your name. We want to hear your voice say, well done. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 If the Master's will and the Holy Spirit will guide me, amen, we want to draw your attention to the book of St. Luke, the 12th chapter. St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Luke, the 12th chapter. And we want to again begin reading out of that 13th verse, Luke, the 12th chapter and the 13th verse. Amen. I saw that Fred Sanford. I got to put the right glasses on. Amen. Amen. Luke, the 12th chapter and that 13th verse. And it reads as thus. It says, and one of the company, 13th verse. 12th chapter, verse 13 of Luke. <laughs> Amen. I must be reading out of the wrong book then. <laughs> it says, And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak unto my brother that he divide the inheritance with us, with me rather. And he said unto him, Man, who hath made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto him, said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life cons consisteth not of the abundance of things which he possess. And he spoke a parable unto them, and said unto them, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he said, though, he said, therefore within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, and he said this within, I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. 
and I will say unto my soul, Soul, thou have much goods laid up for many years. Take heed, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night shall thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things which thou have prepared? So it is with so it is that that they lay up treasures for himself and not rich toward God. They make it, God have a blessing to the regions of the holy and divine word. And if the master will, we want to back up in this passage of scripture where God called a man a fool. Now, I'm not saying that God truly called him a man a fool. This is the translation of the Bible. Amen. He might have said something else, but the one that did the translation said he said a fool. And you know, it's dangerous to call a man a fool. And it's sure enough dangerous if God called you a fool. Amen. But the Bible says that I've read the Bible, and there's two occasions that I've seen where God call a person a fool. In the book of Psalms, he says, the fool that said in his heart, there is no God. So he was talking to someone, letting them know that they were the fool to think that there is no God. And you know, sometimes even in our lives, things will happen and we'll wonder, is there a God? And, you know, we look at what's going on in politics now. We probably say to ourselves, you know, how in the world could God allow a man like Trump run for president again? <laughs> Amen. With him. And then there are some that believe he's a, that the Bible says that Trump should run for God, for his president. They believe that God sent Trump. And I ain't saying God didn't send Trump. Amen. He might have sent him to get us right. I know he didn't send him because he was right. Amen. Because many things that happen to us when we do wrong. Amen. God, if you read the Bible, even the children of Israel, every time they would do wrong, something would happen in their life for God to get them right. And so many times, even in our lives, things had to happen to us for us to wake up and get it right. Sometimes we live so low that, amen, that sickness is the only thing can make us get back on the right track. But God has a way of doing things. Amen. His ways are not like our ways. And his thoughts are not like our thoughts. Amen. God moves in mysterious ways. For the Bible talks about God telling a man came to Jesus. Amen. After he had been preaching to a great large company of people. One of the men in the company came to Jesus and said to him, Master, said, say something to my brother that he might give me part of the inheritance. What he was saying to Jesus was, Jesus, make things right with my brother. Make him treat me right. Make him do what's right for me. But he wasn't understanding that Jesus didn't come down to make things right, to be a divider of, 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 of property down on this earth. You know, a lot of times we pray for things that God don't have nothing to do with. You ever get up in the morning and try to crank your old car and go click, click, Lord, have mercy. Make it crank, Lord. God ain't got no control over your car. Amen. If it crank up, thank you, Lord, you crank it up. Amen. We give God credit for things that God said, hey, that's out of my hands. I'm not, I didn't come down to crank your car. And, you know, we ask God for foolish things, you know, to do things for it. But God didn't come down for that stuff. God come down to save our souls. That was his main purpose, to come down to save our soul. He didn't come down to heal all the people, because if you read the Bible, he healed a whole lot of people. But amen, when, what, about, what happened when he went to the pool of Bethesda when the man was laying there, which had been there for 38 long years? Amen, he could have came by and just waved his hand, and everybody at the pool would have got up. But he didn't come down for that reason. He came down to save that one man. And he told that one man to get up, take up your bed, and walk. And the man began to make excuses. And when God tells us something, won't we make excuses? Amen. Why we don't want to do this and why we can't do this? Amen. And, you know, somebody come by and say, baby, you want to go to church with me Sunday? Well, I ain't got nothing to wear. And the first thing you look at them, you ain't naked now. Wear what you got on. Amen. You don't have to come in with a suit on just to come into church. Amen. It's, it's our 
people of our color that, that like to wear clothes like to get dressed up for Sunday. And the reason we like to do that because we didn't have nothing when we was out there in the cotton field. Amen. We had one day that we could get and put on our Sunday best right. and go to the church. Right. Amen. If you leave here right now, no, they were out of the church now, the white folks here. But if you had got up early this morning, walked in the white folk church with your suit on, they looked at you like, who was that? Because all of them in there with their work clothes on. When they get through, come out of church, you see them out there in the yard cutting grass and doing all kinds of things in their yard. Amen. But we got that little small custom about us. Amen. You ain't supposed to do no work on Sunday. You remember when Grandma used to tell you that? You ain't even supposed to cook on Sunday. Amen. But the Bible tells me that the Sabbath was made for man, not man made for, for the Sabbath. Amen. So whatever you got to do, if your ox is in the ditch, you need to get him out. Even if it's on the seventh day. Amen. But we so traditional. Amen. We got to come to church all dressed up. If I ain't got a brand new dress for this Sunday, I wore that two Sundays ago and I wore that in the last month. I got to have me a new one for this month. Amen. My shoes don't match my pocketbook. Amen. All these things that we got to have just to come to the house of God. All right. Amen. And God has said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Yeah. And I will give you rest. Right. You see, God just wants us to come to him. But this man comes to Jesus saying, Lord, say something to my brother. That he might divide the inheritance with me. But Jesus told him, say, hey, who, who made me a judge or, or a divider between you and your brother? So I didn't come down for that. I come down to save souls. So Jesus, he always spoke in parables. Amen. No matter what crowd he was talking to. But Jesus would come to some fishermen. He was talking about fishing. If he would come to farmers, he'd talk about farming. Amen. But this time he said to the man, trying to, probably trying to make the crowd understand. Why he come down? He said to the man, he said, there was a certain man that had a, a, a big farm. In other words, he had a big farm. And, and his ground brought profit plentifully. And he said to himself, said, I don't, you know, I got plenty here. But where am I going to bestow it? He said, well, my bonds are not big enough. And that's the way we are. We want to, you know, we got things, we, you know, even in our closet. Amen. We got it so packed. Amen. Can't put nothing else in there. Because we got them packed. Amen. And that's the way this man was. He said, where shall I bestow my goods? Because my buns are not big enough. So in other words, his bun was already full. But it just wasn't big enough for the stuff he had to bring in. So he said to within himself, this is what I'll do. I'll pull down my buns and I'll be a bigger bun. And the moment we do that. Amen. I find me another room. I put these clothes somewhere. Put these shoes somewhere. I put this stuff somewhere. Amen. And this man took and did all this. Amen. Pulled down his bonds instead of giving away what he had in his bonds. Had been there for a while instead of giving that away. Then he'd had room for his new stuff to go in the bonds. But what he did, he tore down his bonds and built new bonds. And then put his stuff in there and then look at what he said. Just like us. I got plenty laid up for many years. Take my ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But look at what God said. But God. Amen. God got his eyes on you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're doing, good or bad, God got his eyes on you. And you don't want God to come to say but to you, better when you're wrong. Amen. I don't want God to catch me in one of them wrong buts. But the Bible said, God said, but God said to this man, thy fool. Call the man a fool according to the King James Version. Said, thou fool, you don't know this night your soul going to be required of you. Amen. He died that same night. And then, then the question came up, whose are those things that you put up? Who going to have them now? Amen. We got stuff put up. Amen. And then when somebody died in the family, amen, they start giving it out. They start giving it away time before you even get cold in the ground. You done gave away them shoes you thought would look so good. Amen. Give away all them suits you thought you had that fitted you, make you look just right. Amen. Somebody else will be walking around in those suits. All right. And he told him, he said, what is, you know, the thing that a man accomplished on this side? That don't mean nothing. Right. Amen. You can have a whole lot of stuff on this side. Right. But if you ain't got nothing on the other side, right. amen, you done made a mistake. Right. Amen. I'm glad I'm putting us sending up timber every day of my life. Oh, no. Amen. I want something on the other side. Amen. When I come down to the end of this life journey, I want to hear God say, well done, servant. 
Amen. I want to hear God say you done something for the poor. Amen. You may not gave them a whole lot of money. Amen. But just a word of encouragement. Amen. Might help somebody on the way. Amen. But we always complain about what we don't have. But I stopped by to tell you, you got more than a whole lot of folks have. Amen. You got a roof over your head. Amen. You got a bed to lay down in. Amen. Go down the street just a little bit. You'll see somebody walking the street with the, with the covers on their back. Ain't even got no bed to lay on. Nah, they, they go lay in a, a corner somewhere. And here we are talking about I ain't got nothing. Ain't God all right? I don't know about you, but I got my mind made up. I don't have much on this side, but I got a whole lot on the other side. And when I get there, I want to see Jesus and tell him, thank you. You brought me from a mighty long way. Sometimes crying, sometimes laughing, sometimes pain, wrecking this old body. But guess what? I'm on my way to the promised land. Anybody here? Have you got your mind made up? Have you got your heart fixed? Or you're on your way to the promised land? Don't fool me, church. You might be on your way to a promised land called hell. Ain't God all right? It's more than one promised land. You got two choices. You can go to heaven or you can go to hell. Ain't God all all right, if you're going to hell, just go on. Don't wait on me because I'm not on my way to a burning hell because I catch too much hell on this side. They want to live a life saying I love the Lord and he heard my cry, saying he pitied my every groan and living like hell. And God, all right, I don't know about you. I may not have a whole lot. I may not have a lot to give. But I stop by to tell you, I'm just like those two broke preachers. What I have, give I thee. And God, all right, I heard and I read where the Bible said there was a man by the that was laid at the gate called Beautiful. And God, all right, they laid him there every day. And those that came by, he was begging from them. And somebody might have came by, dropped a nickel in, dropped a penny in, and the big shot made her came by and dropped a dollar in. Ain't God all right? And that's just like a church folk. We, we, we come up, we didn't have much, and my grandmama put a dime in, granddaddy put a quarter in, and the one that had the big fields and had plenty of land put a dollar in. And I stopped by to tell you, we got jobs making big money. And guess what? We're still putting the penny in and still putting the dollar in, still putting the quarter in. And God, all right, God has blessed you. How come you don't bless his house? I don't know about you, but I got my mind made up. If I can't give, I can help somebody as I go along this way, ain't God all right? Anybody here, have you made up in your mind? I may not have a whole lot of finances, but I stop by to tell you, don't run to the church and say I'm gonna help clean up the church. But I stop by to tell you, church, the building is all right. We got somebody that'll clean up the church. How do you know, David? When I come in here, ain't no paper all over the floor. And the carpet has been cleaned. Ain't God all right? But I stop by to tell you, the real church is not in here. The real church is on the outside. Ain't God all right? This place is a house of worship. This place is the house of prayer. Ain't God all right? Uh, talking about what can I do for the church? We want to work on the building, but I stop by to tell you, just like God told this man, 
I didn't come to be a judge or divide for you. I come to save sin sick souls. And when he left here, I heard him say to his disciples, greater work shall you do than I've done. Ain't God all right? And here we are, got plenty of money, driving nice cars, living in nice homes. I hear what you said. I'm living in a building that I don't even own. Everybody saying the house that I live in, grandmama gave it to me. But I stopped by to tell you, you still got more than others. Ain't God all right? There's a whole generation out there with nowhere to live, nothing to eat. And here we are, just as fat as we want to be. Ain't God all right? Yes, I got a made up man. I'm going to live for Jesus. I got a made up man. I'm going to run for Jesus. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be around here. But I stopped by to tell you, for the balance of my days, I'm going to give them to the Lord. Yes, yes. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he a doctor in a sick room? Ain't he a lawyer in a courtroom? He's a friend to a friendly child. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Have you tried him? Have you tried him? Have you tried him? Do you know the man? If you know him, you ought to stand up. Be a witness for the Lord. Ain't he a way maker out of no way? When you're hungry, won't he feed you? When you're thirsty, won't he give you the drink? When you're outside, won't he put a shelter over your head? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yeah! Say yeah! Say yeah! Oh, yeah! He's a friend. Stick closer than any brother. He's the one on Cabri Hill. Gave his life. Just look at him. A rugged cross on his shoulder. Ain't God all right? On his way to die for my sin. Die for your sin. Tell me. They ripped his feet. They nailed his hand. They put him on the cross. Ain't God all right? I heard somebody say they made a mistake because they lifted him up. I heard Jesus say, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Ain't God all right? They tell me he hung there from the sixth, the ninth hour. And after a while, he looked up toward heaven, said, Father, into thine hand, I commend my spirit. Ain't God all right? Dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder. He died. He died. Or didn't he die? But I stopped by to tell you, I'm so glad he couldn't stay dead. They tell me, stay there all night, Friday night. Stay there all night, Saturday night. But you know what happened? Early, 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 early. Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. He got all power. Power to destroy what he will defeat. I don't want God to call me no fool. Although sometimes I might act like a fool. But I don't want God to call me no fool. Amen. There's something about Jesus. Amen. I'll make you act strange to everybody else. Amen. But if you felt what I feel, amen, you will be jumping and hollering too. Amen. God been too good to me. Amen. To just sit down on him. Won't say thank you, Jesus. Won't give him a hand clap. Won't raise our hand and praise the Lord. 
God brought me from a mighty long way. Amen. I come from nothing. May I still ain't got nothing. Amen. But what I have, God gave me. And what I know, God taught me. And where I go, God will carry me. Amen. I trust in God to do all things but fail. Because he never failed me yet. I had some friends to fail me. But God knows. He may not come when I call him, but just like grandmama said, he's an on time God. And he's on his way back. I said, I, I got a feeling that everything's gonna be all right. Oh, 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 I, yes, I do. Oh, 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 I got a feeling Oh, 
morning. Let's praise him. New day. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right, church. Well, I, I got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Whoa, whoa, whoa.